Okay, let's hope that this freaking looks okay. Oh no, no, qu'est-ce qui se passe? Because I, by the time, uh, I, uh. okay, cool, let's freaking do it. Bonjour à toutes et à tous et bienvenue sur Blabla Bla Katie. My name is Katie and today we're going to Blabla Bla about all my tips on opening a French bank account. I think that this is the second most requested video that I saw in the comments on my last video on how to find an apartment in France. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will put the link in the description box below. And in that video, I talked about how you need to have a French bank account in order to be eligible for an apartment in France. But unfortunately, you also need to have proof of residency in order to get the bank account in the first place. Personally, I didn't really have that Part of a time opening a bank account in France, but this is because I already had an apartment in France. This is not usually the norm, and if you want to know how that happened, how I got an apartment before I was even in France, definitely go check out my last Wednesday video. This was towards the end of 2017, and I was living in a very small town close to Nantes. In this town, the only bank that was available was Crédit Agricole, and I had a pretty good experience with this bank, but I also didn't really have any other options. And to open the bank account, for me, the process was fairly straightforward. I already had the specific documentation that I needed to be eligible to open a bank account in France, and I will talk about the documentation a little bit later. There were not many people who spoke English in the town that I was living in, and I don't think there was anybody who spoke English in that branch, so I did sort of have to fudge my way through the French for a little bit. If you want me to make a video in the future on specific vocabulary or phrases that would be useful to opening a bank account, let me know in the comments down below, and I can definitely work on that. But yeah, the process was super straightforward. I walked in, I sat down with an advisor, I somehow explained my situation. And I ended up opening, I'm pretty sure what's called a compte courant. This is pretty much just the basic checking account. I say that I'm pretty sure it was a compte courant because in some banks in France, you can also get a specialized account, for example, a non-resident account or a young person's account or a student's account, things like that. So I'm not sure if I ended up getting a specific young person's account or a compte courant, but either way, I just had the basic functions. It was a checking account and I had a credit card and a little checking book that I don't think I ever used. At the same time, I still had my banks in the United States open and there's no problem to have several accounts in different countries open at the same time. No issue with that whatsoever. At this point, you might be wondering about how I paid for things before I got my bank account in France. There are a couple of different things you can do. So for the most part, before I had this bank account open, I used a credit card from one of my banks in the United States. So before you leave, you definitely want to contact your banks and any credit card companies so that you can find out if there are any fees for using these cards when you were abroad or for taking money out from an ATM and things like that. When I went to France, I mostly just used one credit card that I had and I was told beforehand that it would charge an extra 1% on any purchases that I made abroad. Since I wasn't buying insanely expensive things, I knew that 1% wasn't going to kill me if I added that onto every purchase I made in France. So for the first few days or weeks or so, it really wasn't a big deal for me to use this card. That being said, probably on the same phone call, you want to let these same banks and credit card companies know where you're going to be in the world and when. And this is because if you don't, it is very likely that they will freeze your cards. So if you're going to be in France for a specific amount of time, let them know so that they can put a note on your account so they won't freeze the card. And you also want to start thinking about where you might be going to travel on the weekends or on vacations. And even if you don't have specific dates in mind, it's helpful to give them a sort of ballpark idea. So once you're in France, if your credit cards do end up being frozen, even if you already told them ahead of time that you were going to be in France, it does happen unfortunately. What you want to do, or at least what I did that worked really well, is I had someone back home call the bank or the credit card company while I was on the phone with them. And that way I could explain my situation because I wasn't able to make international phone calls with the phone that I had. This was a really quick fix, but if you find yourself in a situation where your cards are frozen and you can't contact the bank or the credit card company for one reason or another, something else that you want to prepare for ahead of time is bringing local currency to France with you. You will definitely want to take out cash from an ATM or from your bank and exchange it to the local currency. And the amount that you want to take is enough to last you a few days if you run into any problems with your credit card and it takes a day or two for that to get all figured out. Although you can exchange your currency at the airport, you should honestly use that as a last ditch effort because they are going to charge the highest rates. What you should do instead is before you leave 
leave for France, just go to your local bank and they will have the best rates for you. Now, when you know where you're going to be in France, you can start doing a little bit of research on the banks that are available there. Like I said, where I was living in France, I didn't really have a choice and it ended up being fine. But if you do have a choice, you will definitely want to compare the fees that they charge because more often than not, banks in France are going to charge you just for having an account open. It's not ideal, but this is something you'll want to look into. And there is a site, I don't have the name off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen. And it actually compares all of the different fees that banks in France will charge. You'll also want to see whether or not they have online banking, if that's something that's important to you, and what services they offer. For example, if they charge anything for international wire transfers. To be honest, I didn't really use international wire transfers that much. Like I said before, I just used my credit card while I was waiting for my first paycheck in France to come through. But if you're thinking about transferring your money from your home bank into your French bank, then this is something you'll want to do some research on for these banks as well. When it comes time to opening a bank account in France, you do want to be aware of all of the different documents that you have to bring to the appointment. So if you remember my discussion on the dossier in how to find an apartment in France, you know that the French really love their paperwork and it is no different with opening a bank account. Right off the bat, what you'll need is proof of identification, residency, and resident status. This likely means you will need your passport and some sort of utility bill from wherever you're living that has your name on it and the address of the place. Where I was living in France, my name was not on the utility bill. So instead I brought identification from my landlord as well as one of their utility bills with their name and address on it and a letter signed by my landlord that confirmed that I was living with them. If when you're trying to open a bank account and you have this appointment, you don't have a landlord yet, and say you're just staying in an Airbnb, then you should ask your host for the same three documents. And if for some reason you run into snags with your host not willing to provide that, or if you're in a different sort of living situation where you can't get these documents from someone, then you should turn to your employer and ask if they would be able to provide documentation for that. As for the resident status, what you'll want to show is your visa. I will say when I went to France, I had the first part of my visa, but it hadn't been validated yet because I was waiting to hear back for my final appointment and this wasn't an issue at all. I know that I also brought a certificate from both of my banks back in the United States and I personally translated them, pretty much saying that I was in good standing. I also brought my bank statements from these banks and to be honest, I can't remember if the person I was working with even asked for them, but I know that's definitely what I brought, as well as my arrêté de nomination, which was proof that I was working as a teaching English assistant in France. And finally, I brought another document that was specifically from my school called a procès verbal d'installation. I have no idea what's on that document. I just read about it in my diary, needing it for my bank account when I was in France. But once you're at your school and you kind of know who to go to for administrative tasks, just ask them for a procès verbal d'installation. And I don't know, maybe the person that you'll be working with won't even ask for that document, but I know that's what I needed to provide, so voila. In the appointment, you also want to be prepared to sign a bunch of papers. I couldn't even tell you what all the papers had to do with, but I just remember constantly having to sign and sign and sign. But again, the French love their paperwork. And if you are successful, you are going to leave with what's called a RIB, R-I-B. This is pretty much just your bank account number, but it is going to be so important for everything else. It's going to be part of your dossier for finding an apartment. It's going to be able to allow you to get a French SIM card or a French phone. So make sure that you get a bunch of photocopies of your rib. I had maybe 10 of them and I didn't need all of them throughout my time in Zabif, but they were definitely helpful to have on hand. It will take a few days for the account to be ready, but you will get some sort of notification, whether a phone call or an email to let you know that the account is ready and is able to be used for deposits and withdrawals. And within seven to 14 days, that's when you should be getting a debit card and the checking book if you're getting both of those. Now, I do also wanna talk about the possibility of opening a French bank account before you are physically in France. And this is something that I had never previously considered. And it's something that even now, I don't really know if I'm gonna do. I am going to do more research on it. And again, I'll get back to you on this. But for now, I do wanna share with you what I found online. Apparently, some French bank accounts will let you open a non-resident account before you're in France. But I will say that this might require a minimum deposit. There might be restrictions on this account depending on what country you're in, especially if you're in a non-European Union country. You will need to provide documentation either online or through the mail. And if you go through the mail, it is going to take a really, really long time. So that's also something to keep in mind. And with the documents that you're sending online or through the mail, you might have to get them notarized. So they might have to be officially certified for the bank to accept them. I would imagine that the documents that they would be asking for would be pretty 
similar to just what they would be asking for for a normal account, a compte courant, when you're physically in France. But regardless, you need to show the intention to stay in France long term. You would need to be able to provide the details of your eventual move to France and later on provide your French address. Again, this is just information that I found online, so I don't really know anything beyond that. But I also found that it's possible for international banks that are also based in France to help you open an account there. So say you are part of an international bank here that has branches in France, they might be able to help you easily set up an account in France before you leave. The final possibility for opening a French bank account, if you wanted to do it beforehand, is actually opening an online account. The four different online banking sites that I found were N26, LeoPay, Bunk. I don't know how to pronounce that, but Bunk and Revolut. I read that all you have to do to set up an account is to download the app, provide a physical address, an email, and a cell phone number. That being said, I don't know if this physical address has to be in France, and I also read that some of these online banks might charge a small fee for online banking, or they might offer free online banking services. But then if you were to try to access different services, like an in-branch service, they may charge you a really, really high rate. So it's definitely something to read in the fine print. But but again, I don't have any personal experience with this. It's just a potential option I found online. So the last thing I want to talk about is what to do if you go into a branch and you try opening an account and they refuse to open it for you. Of course, this didn't happen to me. I have not heard of it happening to anybody else, but it's good to know what your rights are in case this happens. First, you should ask for what's called a lettre de refus. They're not legally required to tell you why you've been rejected, but they are required to give you this letter. I don't know what's in it, but it is a legal requirement. I'm stressing this because apparently some banks don't want to give you that letter. So if they say no, you need to be adamant and say, this is a legal requirement. I'm not leaving until you get me that lettre de refus. Once you get this letter, you're going to bring that as well as your ID and proof of residence to the Banque de France. And this bank will designate a different bank that will be obligated to accept you. They will give you a letter to then give to said bank. And then when you go to said bank, they will have to open an account for you. Of course, this doesn't mean that you get to bypass all of the documentation that you need and all the paperwork that you have to sign, but it does mean that you will get a bank account. So those are all my tips on opening a French bank account. If you still have questions on this or on anything else that has to do with moving to France or living in France, please put them in the comments down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. If you got any value out of this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will talk to you soon. A la prochaine!